Welcome to Discovering. Brian Whitens took the night off, and tonight is all about perch fishing. Let's go give it gold right there. That might be one of the biggest perch in this lake. So sit back and relax. It's Monday night, and it's time for Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure. The only way I measure feelings that I have for this fine land. There is so much to discover when you're a long time lover of northern Michigan. Lake Ogibbic, home of teeter pigs, hogs, whatever you want to call enormous lake perch. It's time to reel them in. I met up with guide Justin Sofa from Just Fish Guide Services at the Maple Ridge Motel and Gus's Bait Shop near Berkland. We got on the ice just before sunrise because you can't fish all day if you don't start in the morning. Got some weight. So because of the depth we're fishing, we like to uh, just kind of take our time, reel them up slow. So as you get uh, the pressure, will ruin up their insides. What do you got down there? Nice perch. Just a giant. That's what we're talking about. A nice Lake Ogibbic teeter pig perch. It's not a lot of these like these in here. We kind of, it's like trophy hunting. You know they're here, you know they're around, you just gotta sit around and wait for them. Just like a trophy buck. But yeah, this is, this is what people come here for. Real nice looking perch. So it's real important, fish like this, you see the eggs. Um, usually the big females like that, we just try to hurry up and get them back right away so they can go and repopulate the water. Thank you. I'm like getting a teeter pig on your first fish. I looked up and that fish was already starting to chew. But since that rod was so soft, it didn't feel anything until I went over there and gave her the bacon. So what we have here on Lake Ogibbic, we like to run what we call dead sticks. Generally what you want to find is a rod with a very soft tip on it. We're using a Tune-Up Customs Inferno Rod Ultralight. So when the fish grabs onto the line, they won't feel any resistance until they hit this spot right here and to help us see we're using a teeter pig spring bobber with a high vis ball on the end of it so what we like to do is wigglers are the main the main forage for the perch here so we'll just take one we like to run two jigs on a line so we'll tail hook them right through the end and then we'll grab one more and we'll tail hook this guy as well Sometimes the perch are a little bit more aggressive and they like to they like to cruise higher up off the bottom, so that's where that second wiggler will help help trip them. And we set them down. So right now we're in 27 feet of water. What we we'll like to do is set it between 25 feet, so about two feet off the bottom. That way when those perch are cruising around, they're gonna see that wiggler and they'll come up and hopefully smack it. And it's a little bit chilly here today below freezing anyways. We like to just throw a hole cover over it. To help keep that hole from freezing up on us. Those perch bite really light, so if you get ice in the hole, 
you know you want to, you want that line to be able to flow through real nice and easy so you can detect the bites another big one so this one hit really light you just saw a spring bobber kind of flip down a little bit. Just as we were about to turn our backs on it. This feels like another good one. It's just coming up easy. Oh, another monster. That might be one of the biggest perch in this lake. <laughs> that is a... Let's go give it gold right there. Another really big fish. So that's not a bad, uh, not a bad start today. It's a real long one. Like I guess it's real important to get these big girls back in the water right away. So they have a better chance to survive. It was definitely upper 14s possibly in that 15 range. I know a lot of people ask how long they are. We've measured hundreds of them, so we just kind of eyeball them now. Let's see if these fish uh, give us a minute, <laughs> get some heat. So when we jig inside the shack, generally what we'll do is we'll run a spoon. And these will keep a little bit higher up, just to try to draw the fish into the area. And the way the wigglers swim, they just kind of flap around. So I'll just kind of emulate when I'm jigging. Let's give it light twitches. When the fish will come in, I'll start to slowly pull it away. And I'll let it catch up. And then I'll pause it and see if it hits. If it doesn't hit, I'll start jiggling. and pulling it away and see if it chases. And a lot of times I'll get a reaction out of them. When you're using a jigging rod, this is a Tune-Up Customs noodle rod. It's good to have that real soft tip on there. So as soon as they hit it, you'll feel it. A lot of times what happens is you'll be jigging like this and the fish will grab it and the rod will just stop moving. It'll stay down and then you give it the beans. So when we set up our, our units, we'll zoom on the bottom half of the screen since these fish almost always come up off the bottom. So anytime you see marks up higher like this, that's usually a school of Cisco swimming through. We usually just leave them ones alone unless people feel like smoking them or whatever. You can reel up and get a good chance of catching them. So on these hummingbirds, it's nice. You can have the dial so you can see the whole water column. But then from the yellow down is a zoom window. And then this side is magnified on the bottom part, bottom few feet of the water column as well. Maybe we'll get a double. He smacked it. He did. Here he comes. He was on his way back up. We didn't have much action at first while jigging in the shack, marking fish, but not many were taking the bait. And you could tell we were getting a little shack happy in there. Oh, that'd be something. He's out there. You caught a fish backwards with your mitten. <laughs> Makes for good TV. Yep. That's how we do it up here. Finally, the guys got a few to bite. Spook him. And he's on. Not a bad fish. No. Cool. Good eater if we're gonna keep fish, but they get a free pass today. Yeah. <laughs> Guy? Yeah, I'm trying to slow him down. Mike's called a little starter fish. <laughs> and you got him. Perch. Is it? Yep. Nothing wrong with jigging him up, right? Right.
While Justin and I were walking back from a missed dead stick outside, because you can't catch them all, Tyler was busy catching hogs in the shack. That is a tank. That's what it's all about right there. Barely got to your rod too. I seen her moving up to it and I was walking over and she pulled it right in the water. A uh, big part for finding where these fish are is finding active wiggler beds. So you'll see some of the fish. Uh, this area in particular we got, we came out, we started fishing, ended up getting some fish and they were actively feeding. So when we pulled them up, they actually had mouthfuls of wigglers that they had just eaten. Some of them were still wiggling around even. So we knew that we we're near a real good wiggler bed. So what generally happens is this will stay good for a few weeks. The wiggler bed will dry up. They'll pick up most of the wigglers out of it or bloodworms, whatever they're eating. And then they just kind of move on. So we'll do the same. We usually pack up and start going on more recon missions to find the active wiggler beds. I always like catching them when they're jigging, when the fish are aggressive. The days where they like to jig are a lot more fun. You're not running after stuff and it's kind of nice getting them doing it yourself, you know, getting the cadence right and making those fish eat. This is my first year full-time guiding. I've been fishing this lake for 10 years. Um, but I finally, finally started guiding. I did some here and there at the end of last year. Guided all summer long, open water, and then this is my first full winter of having as a full-time job. It's been pretty good. Enjoy meeting a lot of new people, hear their stories, sharing fish stories. And uh, Tyler and I, who works with me, and, and Casey as well, works with me on the weekends. We just, we enjoy watching other people catch big fish. The excitement they get when they, they see that big perch come up through the hole and the smiles on their faces, that's what does it for us. They're pretty hard, so let's see what's on the other end. Oops. One of them small perch. Not small by any means. Nothing compared to the ones you caught earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a big that's a big perch in a lot of places, but on on this lake, that's a short on one end, as they say. <laughs> Probably your own. 10 to 11. Yeah. Go eat some bugs. Right now it's an even trade. You know, you get some jigging, but it's kind of transitioning. As you get into February, it becomes more of a dead stick bite. The fish slow down a little bit, metabolism slows down. Less oxygen and daylight getting down into the bottom. So they just kind of slow down a little bit. So that's why the dead stick is, is real key because it's more natural looking. It's just, just a wiggler swimming on the bottom or close to the bottom is all it is. Got him. Seems like he's gonna be a little bit uh, on the light side. Ooh, maybe not. It's got a little spunk. Big male, maybe. You know, I wasn't really doing much at first, but now it's trying to be a meanie. I think you realize he's hooked now. There's some head chicks. There we go, there we go. Well, that one went to the bottom jig. She hit like she was a little baby, but you can see she's not much of a little baby. Not the biggest one we've got today, but definitely one of those nice like we'll give females. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. She hit that one really light, as you saw. Not aggressive like they were this morning. That's where these, that's where these real light rods and those, those uh, spring bobbers come in handy. There's 25 fish a person. You can have five over 12 inches. Um, a lot of people at 
that will book trips with me, you know, they, they ask, you know, is it, are you gonna get your 25 fish? And the answer to that is pretty, pretty rare. It's a special day if you get more than 25 fish a guy. It's a trophy lake is what it is. Um, you get a lot of those 13 plus inch perch. Um, you'll run into some nice, nice eater sized fish. And there's kind of general locations where those fish will hang around. For the most part, I think the, the bigger females, they don't school up so much. They just kind of make little wolf packs and they'll just cruise around looking for food. They don't, they don't tend to hang around with the little ones. If you're catching smaller perch, there's a really good chance that you're not gonna catch a big one in that school. But it's a good thing to be around them because they're eating, which means the larger females will come around and eat at some point. The key to this lake is being patient. And patient we were. We caught those first two perch right away in the morning. By noon, we had five on the ice. Well, that's giving up easy. Felt good on the hook set. Back to backs. We like that. Yeah, it looks like a nice little male. Thanks, buddy. Good one. Nice fish. Oh, she's spinning you. I'm giving you a nice shot and everything. Look at how pretty I am. They are lively. They are. Very. What I learned hanging out on the ice with Justin and Tyler is you need eagle eyes and speed. You gotta be quick. Usually, uh, once you see them hit, you just kinda drop what you're doing and run there. And uh, give them the beans, as they say. Set them up and pull them in. That one actually kinda hooked herself. She was actually pulling drag out of the out of the reel while it was in the rod holder so she wasn't going anywhere. Hopefully uh hopefully that means they're gonna be aggressive this afternoon. Seems like they picked it up in the last hour or so seeing some more fish. Ooh there we go. Another giant Gogivic birch. Oh, how are you doing, lady? You come here often? It's a nice one. I like the perch just because they're hard to catch. They're more of a challenge. They take a lot out of you, just trying to stay on top of them, but like I said, it's, it's worth it in the end when you get on a good bite. Today was a pretty good bite. They usually stop eating right when, as it gets dark out. There's perch or sight feeders, so usually at nighttime they just belly up to the mud and take a little nap for a while. And right at the end of the day, we caught two more back to back. <laughs> Can't keep up with those numbers. I had to chase Justin with two cameras in hand to that last one, which he let me reel in. It's a nice one. It was another giant hog to finish the day. There you go. <laughs> My first teeter pig. <laughs> there we go. Nice old Lake Ogivik teeter pig. Woo! <laughs> From sunrise to sunset, we caught a total of 16 perch. It was a great day fishing on Lake Ogibbic. Well, that's it for this week. Be sure to check out 906outdoors.com where you'll find the 906 fishing report, TV6 weather, shopping, and more. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next week right here on Upper Michigan's very own Discovering.